Hey, Steve Zelenardo here with Remax Experts, Zelenardo Associates. Quick update on the market. Current inventory, 20,711 units with 732 selling. Remember last week was 20,699 units with about 740 selling. So very similar to last week. There, we haven't had any more um, inventory dumps, so, which is great. Reality is this is going to be our new numbers. I don't see this coming down any further than this, to be honest. I think this is just the start of it. We're going into... Um, November, November, we should have been shortening down. Usually, historically, since my career in real estate, the last 13, 14 years, literally, you'll start seeing um, just this inventory is starting to drop down prior to Christmas. So you'll see like uh, 14, 10, 8, and then usually in Jan, you're like at seven, six, six to 7,000 units. And uh, it looks like we're going in reverse here. So Jan, so next 2024 should be a little bit of a different year just based on the amount of inventory that we're going to start the year with. And obviously there's lower sales in January going forward. So it's going to be a tough market. Uh, we're going to start to see a big transition with realtors. I think I mentioned this in the last post where um, you're going to see a lot of licenses being um, being given up because there's no point of holding your license if you can't do a deal um, just based on the shortage of the deals uh, available and also the amount of inventory um, it's going to be a disaster so if you if you even if you got lucky and you got a listing you're ain't gonna you're not going to sell it and if you're part-time trying to do it it's just going to weigh on you and it's not worth it at the end you're just going to stick to whatever you do for a living um, yeah that's that's based on that and then what we're doing now obviously because now we've had a flat 20,000 units for the last let's say two to three weeks, we're starting to look at absorption rates again. And what we've done is looked at uh, Kleinberg. Treb usually provides this information to us realtors, but it's like two and a half weeks after we need it. We need it the first of the month, every month, and we get it like mid-month, which doesn't make sense to me because we can't make any judgment. Um, so we've done this uh, ourselves using math. <laughs> so Kleinberg itself, uh, I want to do the absorption rate in Kleinberg just based on, because it's our client, our office in Kleinberg, we have 96 listings available, which is uh, pretty insane based on the size of the area. Um, it looks like a lot of speculation in the area. People are buying specs, flipping them. Um, a lot of people that maybe bought in can't afford them, and they're just holding, trying to sell them now. And we, we look at the absorption rate right now. It's at 7.4 months of inventory based in Kleinberg, which is insane. In August, it was 6.3, which kind of stunned me then. And it looks like this is keeps increasing further going um, as go, as we're progressing into the year. We got lucky. We sold a few good properties in Kleinberg just recently in the, in the six months of inventory availability. And we did quite well with them. So happy with that. But um, yeah. And you got to remember, there's a luxury market. So a lot of these are based over $2 million range. So there's a huge... Um, a huge dumping of these multi-million dollar properties. And then what we did too is, is a macro version. We looked at all the GTA and uh, in Toronto, just based on their, on the absorption rate for all. And we're at 3.73 months of inventory. So almost four months of inventory based in all of the GTA in Toronto, which is, we've never experienced this. I don't, I don't think I've experienced this. I've been selling real estate since, is it 09? I think it's 09. Yeah, it's something around there. So like 13, 14 years and, this is a, obviously uncharted territory. Um, another article I wanted to go through is, is um, this one. This is interesting. I have a lot of conversations with family, friends, clients, and it's all about based on affordability. Um, I'll give you a crude example, and I kind of run through this a lot because I remember when I was a carpenter, I made $50,000 a year. So it, it, And that was, you know, let's say, the early 2000s. So when I was looking to buy a house in 2009 with my wife, we bought a, a small uh, bungalow in um, Bolton. So basically it was five to six times my income to buy this property. And then my dad was, let's say the same career. Let's say he was a, you know, a laborer, a framer. Um, he was making $16,000 a year and a house was about $50,000 a year. So it took him three times his income to buy a house in Malton, which would be considered Bolton in a sense. It was a very European area, the whole thing, um, you know, good location. So it took him three times his salary to buy a house. It took me five, five and a half times my salary to buy a house, which is still pretty decent, right? And then you start getting into these averages here where it says average home price is 141% higher than the median earning family can afford. Let me just read the article here. Um, so the report published Thursday looked at data on home prices and median earnings for Canadian house, households. 
it found that Canadian family earning the median household income of 80K, which is great money, can reasonably afford $315,000 home. Where do you find that? It's not in that country, let me tell you. With a maximum insured mortgage of 299, so obviously they're, they're going under 20% deposit. However, the average home price in Canada is currently 757,000, which just is even low, low end because it's all of Canada. Uh, the report noted considerably pricier than the average household can afford. So just based on, on um, this amount here, because they go a little bit further where it's like, uh, Toronto itself is 162% higher than what a medium earning family can afford. So basically, if you're making 80,000, you can only get 314, 315,000. You need to be needing to make this. So it's like 100 uh, 130,000 rather than the 80. So it's just, it's, it's, it's quite crazy. And then you kind of go into other markets, other provinces where they, they you know, their prices are lower and, and, and this, that, and the other. But now they're starting to get pricier because people are moving in. There's, I know a lot of uh, Calgary, Alberta. This is like a huge influx. But again, that's, I don't know about you guys, but the weather, right? Like I can't be, like Ontario's worse, bad enough with all the gloominess and the cold. And you're literally enjoy a few months out of the year. Uh, outside and you're stuck inside for the rest and yes we get a great fall and yes the spring is not bad but ultimately the majority of your life is spent indoors rather than outdoors let's just that's let's let's be realistic here um so if you're going to go into the atlantic canada obviously like this is 83 percent higher so it's half of what um let's say on T uh, toronto would be but again it's still 83 percent higher and this is another conversation we need to have with the future because we always think it's about us. We're like the last, the last one. It's it's about our children at the end, right? Like, what do you, what are we supposed to do now? Like, with them and their affordability, how do they, um, you know, strive on? Do they just just rent the rest of their lives, or they just take on massive debts? It's it's a whole thing. It's where, um, again, my parents migrated to Canada in 1968. Is this what they signed up for? No, currently the state of the country is not what they signed up for. 1968, Canada, North America, amazing. You got, you had an, a great opportunity. You, you would work as a laborer, whatever job you had, you had opportunity to um, to buy a house, pay it off in five to ten years, um, you know, put your kids through college, university, have a few cars, have a cottage, have a boat, have everything. And now it's everything, all that's diminished. Uh, obviously, politics is in an uproar right now capitalism if you're looking to do any sort of like investing uh, in real estate or, or any type of uh, investing if you need investment loans it's always I felt the last you know like eight eight to ten years going to the banks and trying to get money is like I was a criminal and you know these are basically me, me putting money back into the system putting myself at risk clearly if you're buying property investment properties you're putting yourself at risk with tenants and stuff like that uh, and then every time the tax year would come roll around and we'd feel like we've done something wrong because we've made money it's just it's a bad feeling to have very negative um so this is like again transitioning into having a market into the states which we obviously we have an office in ontario and now in florida and kind of moving money into florida um currently right now just based on how they're treating um let's say um, investors or business owners is way different so you don't pay state income tax which is great um, you know they have amazing tax laws here they have amazing um, liability laws here which basically works off it into the uh, to the investor like ourselves the capitalists and also the rent uh, landlord tenant board as we call it in Canada is basically it's all in favor of the landlord, even though you don't need to abuse it, but if you need it, it's there for you. If you want to evict a, a tenant, it's like three weeks and it's written in the law that you that the sheriff will physically remove this tenant from your property. Um, and again, it's a process. Three weeks is the latest. It, it's probably can be done in one week rather. Uh, also rent control, you're not, you're not stuck in a position like you are in Ontario where you have to only increase the rent uh, per the, the inflation rate. Um, there's a bunch of stuff like that that's going on. Also, regarding trading properties, if you sell a property, you make a million dollars in capital, you pay zero tax on that. Why? Because if you are a real estate investor, you really don't take that money out and, and buy stuff with it. You reinvest it into real estate and get a bigger portfolio. So what happens with that is you can move it into other properties. Uh, they call it a 1031 switch, where ultimately you're not paying any capital gains on, on the capital earned, which is fantastic. What that does is it allows you to build faster. Almost obvious, and also uh, affordability in housing. Like you can buy, 
currently here in Fort Myers, we own a property in this area. And again, it's a gated community. It's North Fort Myers. Great, great spot. Close to downtown, close to beaches, close to shops, close to everything. You can buy it. Let's say if, if you if, if you first got married, your first time house um, with your spouse or your partner. Ultimately, $260,000 to $280,000 for a townhouse, three bedroom, three bath, 15, 1600 square feet in a gated community with amenities, pool, um, gym, basketball courts, tennis courts, pickleball courts, like the whole thing for like $260,000. And the HOAs are like 300 and change, but ultimately that gives you building insurance, um, the exterior of the property, they have like a reserve fund to, to rebuild the exterior of the property if there's a roof uh, or deficiency or whatever, the exterior deficiency. And then also, I mean, you still got the amenities. You got a gated, gated guard uh, that you're paying the salary for. You got a pool that's obviously got to get maintained. Um, you got a gym, so you don't, you don't need a gym membership. So there's a lot of perks to that. So kind of you kind of weigh where we are here in Canada compared to like some other plates in the United States. Um, yeah, we got to start thinking about the future for our kids for sure. Like where are they going to thrive? Where is it going to be um, a better place for them in the future just based on affordability? And, and clearly Canada right now, unless there's some huge collapse where everything goes down to, you know, 20 year 20 year ago pricing uh, we're pretty much stuck um, and if that happens 20 year ago pricing kind of screws everybody up so uh, catch 22 have a great monday guys ciao